Hello accounts people, time to have an introductory lesson on accounting and bookkeeping. So we're going to have a look at the system and we're going to get started with some double entry and after level 1 and level 2, right at the end, so after about 40 minutes, where it goes in terms of level 3 and level 4. So the system first, we assume that you've understood all about the documents, the basics. We have day books. These are our books of original entry our list of invoices and list of transactions and it's those that we post into our double entry system then we're going to reconcile it then we're going to check everything clear all our errors that's bookkeeping control unit mainly and draw up a final trial balance we'll have drawn up a draft trial balance at the end of uh, bookkeeping transactions so level three staff adjustments all sorts of things we do at the end of the year and then we prepare the accounts at level three and level four in terms of diagrams, <coughs> start off with transactions, enter all the invoices etc into our books of original entry, we'll have a look at some in a minute, uh, post them into our double entry system, reconcile everything, correct everything, draw up our final trial balance, end of year adjustments, financial statement. So these are our day books, our books are of original entry or books of prime entry. Uh, were called day books because they were completed daily but nowadays we just fill a spreadsheet with them maybe weekly monthly uh, it depends on how many invoices you issue if you issue a hundred invoices a day you'd want to do it on a daily basis if you issue 100 invoices a week you'd probably do it on a weekly basis so sales day book invoices to customers purchases day book invoices from suppliers returns from customers to suppliers Cash books is all the money coming in and coming out, separate videos here. Uh, petty cash book, small items of expenditure, to save putting all the entries into our main ledger accounts. Most of these fulfil the function as well as recording everything of we post the totals into our ledger accounts, otherwise we have far too many entries. Imagine our sales invoices, 100 a day, 500 a week, 2,500 a year. That's one big T account, one big ledger account, or one that just posts 50 entries, one per week. Discounts allowed in day and receive, that's where we allow a customer money off for paying us quickly and get money for off for paying a supplier quickly. And then journals, the odd one, just anything else basically goes into a journal. And then we'll go into the double entry system, but let's have a look at our day books first. So I haven't completed this one, it's just got, got the important information. They're quite flexible, especially if you draw them up on a spreadsheet or in the old fashioned blue bound ledger books. You can have all sorts of different numbers of columns or used to be able to. So here we are, these are invoices issued to customers on credit sales. Cash sales don't belong in here. We've got our customers and our dates, so there's the important information. Customers will probably give us an order number and maybe the person who's ordered them or what they're for. Brief description. Invoice numbers should be in order because we don't skip invoices. We start off with one and end up uh, wherever we get to. Uh, broken down. Net without that, that and total. Uh, due date. We can put in a date, whether it's 30 days or 7 days or whatever. We can even write a note when we've received it. It helps it or highlight it or something and put a note maybe when we're chasing them off. So we can see actually, we can filter every customer's out and we can have a look quite quickly what we've owed. These are the totals that matter because those are the numbers that will get posted into our ledgers. Whereas the individual items will get posted into customer's accounts. If customers send us goods back, as we get them, we'll issue a credit note to them. These are for the whole invoice, although it could be for a part invoice. And again, the VATs, we've charged them VAT, we've got to give them that back. Uh, not every invoice, hopefully. Purchase. So, purchase day books can be completed either when we process the orders or when we actually get the invoices off our suppliers. Uh, it won't be in order if it's the latter, because some orders take longer than others. Maybe a description, suppliers, I'm being very basic on the codes and stuff. And again, net, that and total. Some people do it the other way around. Uh, these are the numbers that get posted into our accounts. We'll post the totals, save a lot of work. 
and then sending stuff back to the suppliers we actually issue what's called a debit note number or debit note first that's us saying you owe us this money and then they'll send us a credit note we complete this one as we send goods back again hold invoices could be part so those are our main four day books our purchases and sales and our returns next book of prime entry is our cash book well this is a blank one so we'll have a look at one that's actually completed if it's the same one completed it's the same one as is in a separate video so this one's called a two column cash book that means not the eight columns it's got but cash and bank one column two column on both sides this is the money coming in debits this is the money going out credits opposite way around to what it says on your bank statement because they thought in their own version their own language uh, we started off with £200 in cash, got to be positive, it's got to be a debit. Um, some's come in, some's gone out. Uh, that carry down balances off, makes the columns add up to the same numbers. And we've ended up with £192 cash, £8 less. This is actually a credit entry to start off with, that means our bank account was overdrawn. Uh, with money coming in and money going out of our bank account, We've actually ended up with £20 in our bank account, so that's a, a good short time period. We can also analyse and split them. So this is split, it's, it's the payment side only, and it hasn't got any totals on it. That can be quite useful, although it's got a brought down balance. It means our minions, our ledger clerks, our apprentices don't know how much money's in the business's bank account, and they've only got access to one side of it, so it makes it harder to commit fraud. Not that it doesn't happen. Uh, balance brought down is still there, though it didn't have to be. Uh, these are just the payments. It's the same payments. We're paying £120 out for purchases, but now, as well as the cash and the bank columns, it's analysed. It's analysed into VAT, and purchases are net of that. The computer's net of that, because we're going to claim that £80 back. Office expenses, again, net of that. But actually, when we pay a supplier, the, that was analysed in the day book when we got the invoice so we don't need to analyse it in the cash book so it's just the whole 100 that comes out and when we talk about debits and credits having to add up in our double entry system that we're going to move on to in a second if that's involved it isn't one debit and one credit it means that the debits and credits add up in this case to 120 and that's our cash book other day books, well, petty cash book for small items. There are lots of different versions of this from little pocket books, uh, ledger accounts, spreadsheets, all sorts of ways of dealing with it. This is a, an old AAT exam style one. So petty cash book is, is recording small items of expenditure. Every time we nip around the corner for a stamp or, or a four pints of milk, we don't want an entry into our main accounts. It just clutters our accounts up. So we record the small items of expenditure and check how much is in the tin. And then we'll post into our ledger accounts, you can see debits as debits, all our items of expenditure. Well, these would be stationery, posties, travel, sundry, all little bits and, and pieces. And the idea being to post a month's totals rather than 50 jars of coffee. Then the newer ones, so these have only really existed since 2014. There was a bit of a change to the VAT rules on discounts. Uh, discounts allowed are where you give a customer money off, but you charge them VAT. So we've given them £120 off of paying us quickly. That was 10%. £100 net, £20 VAT. So we charge them VAT. That's going to come back as a, as a debit. It's going to undo the VAT that we charged. And then this is the opposite, so discounts received, we paid the supplier quickly, they've given us £96 off. So VAT that we originally would have claimed back off the government, £16, we've got to unclaim because we got the money off and we haven't paid it and we're not going to pay it to our supplier because we paid them quick and they gave us the discount. Uh, so those rules changed uh, over a period of time actually. So we used to calculate discounts assuming everybody was going to take the discount, if you see that. Uh, the journals, the final book of prime entry. Journals, no particular format. This is a fairly common format. Okay, we're a bit greyed out and made to look a bit posher. Journals are for things that don't fit in the other day books. 
So in this case, the owner is setting up a business with £10,000 worth of money. So £10,000 of capital. As When we look at the double entry, you'll see that those are credit entries. Money coming into the bank, debit the bank, 9600 in the bank account and £400 in cash. And again, debits and credits adding up. So that naturally leads us into our ledgers. So we've just seen some ledgers. The cash book was a developed form of ledger and the T account. And um, they're called T accounts because you can just draw them with one line that looks like a T. And we've got to learn when to debit and when to credit and do some basic double entries for a new business. They will balance off and close them. We'll check our uh, maths. And then afterwards, after we've done an exercise, we'll look at VAT accounting and then accounting for credit purchases and sales, all of which has separate uh, videos. And then entries that aren't in the double entry system. Uh, so the ledgers. So double entries... We have three ledgers. We have a main or general ledger, and nearly everything's in there. Uh, all our expenses and income, everything from electricity, rent, wages, capital, all sorts of items in our main or general ledger. And then we also have a sales ledger. These are the bit we'll look at later that aren't part of the double entry system. This is just our record of individual customers, how much every customer owes us, and all the transactions between us and our customers. And then purchases ledger, all the accounts, sometimes called memorandum accounts, of individual suppliers. They're in addition to the double entry. Double entry takes place in the main or general ledger, and then we do these entries as well. Uh, we also have control accounts, so this sometimes causes confusion, but control accounts... Sales ledger control account or receivables. This is the amount that's owed by all our customers at any point in time. That is the double entry. We post from day books into control accounts. And then our purchase ledger control account payables. That's the amount that is owed to suppliers at any point in time. So the totals go from purchase day book into the payables or creditors sometimes. This one's also sometimes called de debtors account. Uh, Old fashioned language. And the control accounts are in the main or general ledger and they add up to sales. The total of the sales ledger adds up to the sales ledger control account and the total of the purchases ledger adds up to our PRCA. Yeah, that's an important reconciliation. So our double entry rules then. Uh, I've already mentioned debits must always add credits. Uh, it's the language of accounts. It's very important to get good skills on that because they solve a lot of problems. They're used in everyday work to solve problems. Not very few people actually have manual accounting systems or full double entry manual systems. But when things go wrong, that's when we need our double entry knowledge or calculate a few balances. So the normal entries in our T accounts for any expense account is a debit, which means only one side really has numbers in it and details in it. The right hand side, the credit as you look at it, the credit side is blank virtually. Uh, normal entries for assets are the same. Uh, we put them in on the debit side and the credit side is virtually blank, lots of wasted paper. Double entries for this are in the cash book if you pay it straight away. So debit purchases, credit bank. We've actually seen some of these happening in, in the cash book. Or control accounts, purchase ledger control account if it was a purchase bought on credit. Uh, again, videos to follow later. So normal entries for sales or other income is a credit. So sales are normally credits. And then the debit entries either in the cash book or the control account. And liabilities, sources of money like bank loans and capital, their credit entries. So again, you'll see some ledger accounts and all you'll see is lots of entries down the credit side or the debit side and virtually nothing on the other side. And let's do some. So this one, a, a pretty standard exercise. Somebody's setting up a business from scratch. Uh, who knows what will happen? Well, okay, we're starting a business with £10,000 in the bank. So there's no VAT on this, no credit sales, no credit purchases. We'll work on those later. Best get the double entry exercise out the way and build up the skills first. So debit the bank because it's not a cash book, it's just a bank account, but it will do. And the details bit, the bit in the middle, links it to the double entry. 
So that says capital because the other entry is going in the capital account. And that's money coming into our bank account. Which means one debit. Or ten thousand pounds worth of debit. Ten thousand pounds worth of credits. Then we've got to buy some stock to sell. Well we're starting for new business of course we have we haven't got anything to sell if we don't. So number two and it's purchases. We, we bought £2,000 worth of goods. So that was the money coming in. This is the money coming out and this is the double entry for it. That's £2,000 coming out. You see it's adding it up for me. Oh, beauty of spreadsheets. Buying a desk. Well, money coming out again. Uh, what have we got? Well, sometimes you have to use the best account for it. Furnish and fitting, that's fine. Money coming out, and then it was number three. £200 worth of an acid. Acids are debit entries. Now we're going to earn some money. We've travelled to the market, we've sold some goods for £3,000, so that will be coming into the bank account. That's the sale. And then sales, normally one that's easy to remember. That's money coming in, income. Uh, but we've got a £50 travel cost, so... What have we got as expense? Well, the only, we could have some expense, or we the, Must be fuel, maybe. That's the only account we've got, so that'll have to do. Travel cost. So that's the credit. Yeah, there's our £50 from our bank coming out. So you can see money's coming in, that's what's gone out, and we'll balance it off later. We could work out now we've got just over 10000 Uh Buy more stock. Okay, we've got... You said the usefulness of spreadsheets is helping me. Except it wasn't 2000, it was 4000. Uh, Sounds for 5 so although I bought 4000, I've only sold 3000. That's not good, but. Sheets were invented for accountants, you're starting to see why. And our expense, of course. Going in debits and credits, although credits and debits sometimes. Uh, down to there, more stock. Number eight. Hang on. Back to two thousand. Uh, as per seven, so again we sold uh, another three thousand pound worth of goods. And we've incurred our travel cost. Yep, so that's per seven. Then we've got an annual depreciation charge. I've already done this one. Uh, depreciation expense. 
So accumulated depreciation reduces the value of asset in our books. So what was 200 is now worth 150 in our books. We'll see that later. And that's our expense, our annual expense charge of depreciation. And already balance those runs off to save time. One debit, one credit. So we've done those. Closing inventory. Oh yeah, I forgot about that one. That's already in there. Closing inventory isn't a ledger account. We go around and we count it because sometimes we miss record stuff. Sometimes it gets pinched. Sometimes it gets lost. Sometimes it gets damaged. So we actually do a stock take, and that's what goes into our accounts. The actual stock take value. So now we've put our double entries in, we can balance off our accounts. As you can see, we had 19,000 in and 8,350 out. So on the last day of the financial period, we will work out what the balance is. And carried down is just a balance in item. It makes the columns add up because accountants like columns to add up. So apart from, all that does is make the columns add up. Take the biggest side, subtract the smaller side. Both columns now add up to 19,000. At the start of the next time period, it will be brought down. So that was one that's a bit more meaningful. We have actually got £10,650 in our bank account. If you we were overdrawn, carry down and brought down the other side all the rest is going to be very easy and, and quite tedious sometimes to uh, close off or to, uh, to balance off but it has to be done I if I can manage, oops I was just going to say can I manage to do the whole lot without a typo? I couldn't. So that's that one done. This one then. So all these other ones, you know which side the carry down and brought down is going to be. Because it will always be the same side. So there's a few accounts that can go either way, bank being one of them, VAT you can be owed money. But the rule still applies. There we are, oh, they're nearly there. Uh, those bottom two were already done, so. Carry down an expense at level three. We start working out which is an income or expenditure at the end of the year. We close them off rather than carry down and bring down. So, if you ever see that, that's just uh, that will happen at level three. Does cause problems. I hate it when students don't like the idea that we do things differently at level 2 and they weren't taught that or told it would happen. So those are all balanced off, very tedious obviously, but you can see what I mentioned earlier that purchases, lots of white space, just use the one side. And we've got balances on them all because I've already done these. Although we're going to date our mini trial balance, uh, effectively just checking everything adds up. Like if it was a full trial balance, we put it in separate rows and items. I'm just going to add up the numbers. We had to use the brought down balance. So that was our bank. That was our capital. Uh, then we've got our purchases and our sales. Uh, then we've got motor vehicle expenses, and uh, that's it. So, as you, you'd expect to see far more debits than credits. And 19,050, so our debits and our credits add up. So, we've a mini mathematical check. It's not perfect, there are lots of things we could have done wrong. We could have missed something out completely, uh, but it goes some way 
to proving that our accounts are correct and that's our first bit of double entry exercise get good at doing that it pays dividends later you need to be able to balance off accounts close off accounts without thinking about it wouldn't want any student turning up at level three struggling to do this it's very important underpinning knowledge for everything uh, beyond AAT level 4 your double entry skills need to be good so that's done that one then uh, so the next step is to learn which accounts include VAT which are inclusive or total or gross depending on the wording of the examiner or whoever has written it or your accountants and which ones don't uh, general rule control accounts already mentioned this is the amount that uh, suppliers are owed or we are, are owed from our customers they pay us including that and we pay them including that so control accounts include VAT and the bank you go to Tesco buy a jar of £1.99 worth of coffee you pay them £1.99 including that you don't pay them the £1.60 whatever it is uh, expenses though these are where we can claim that back if we are that registered obviously we've just done an exercise where there wasn't any VAT it was a new business the turnover wasn't big enough to be that registered uh, so purchases stationary electricity don't include VAT then that will go into a VAT account and income accounts do not include that so our sales is always net the bit that we add on, if I make £200 worth of sales plus VAT, I charge my customer £240, the £40 is the government's money, we're collecting it for them. There's no VAT on lots of items, drawings, that's the owner taking out their capital and profits from the business, capital and putting money in, wages have other forms of tax, not VAT. And items used like rent don't usually doesn't have that, but it depends on the lease and depends on services provided. Uh, whether it's rooms or if they clean or provide security, then it's likely to have that on it. So the VAT amounts are posted into the VAT control account. Separate video. Um, same side as the item. So purchases are debits. VAT is a debit. So here we've got a cash purchase, the one we've used earlier. We spent £120 on purchases. Debit purchases, debit VAT, credit the bank with the full amount, the 120. So it's not every debit equals a credit, it's debits and credits add up, in this case, to 120. And once we've worked all our VAT out, at the end of every quarter or, or monthly or, or whatever, depending on the system we're on, difference between our credits, the amount we charge our customers, and the amounts that we've been charged by other people, we pay the difference to HMRC. And then credit sales. So we're getting through the video now. So again, separate videos for postings and reconciliations. Good questions on Osborne's online access to everybody. It, it, it's easy on the Osborne Books website to find. Uh, credit sales then. So everything we just did had no VAT in it. And it was all cash sales because we went to a market. But credit sales are recorded in the sales ledger control account. They're posted into it from the day books that we saw earlier. The totals. Uh, the account is the total including that that our credit customers owe us. None credit sales aren't recorded. Mentioned that before. And I've also already mentioned, but don't forget, we post them from the day books. There's a separate video on this. Uh, should add up to the total amount of all our customers' accounts in the bit we haven't seen yet. The sales ledger. And uh, here's a fairly complicated one, although it's only got one item, it's, it's got like a summary total. So a sales ledger control account, so brought down balance on the debit side, that's money that we were owed at the start of the month, at the start of March, by our customers. Then we sold them another £15,000 worth of goods. Uh, but they sent us £150 back, we gave some of them £250 off for paying us quickly. Uh, then there's a set-off, so that means a customer is also a supplier, and we owe them 400 they owe us 400 just knock it off instead of actually making the transaction. But it is recorded, we're not sort of pretending it disappeared, that's unethical. Uh, receipts on customers, that's money coming into the bank, debit the bank, credit the control account, this is part of the double entry, there's a double entry for all of these items. Bad debts uh, is an expense, so £250 uh, debit in the irrecoverable or bad debts account then we've had a bounce check 
Uh, we've also refunded a customer, credit the bank because it's a payment, and debit the control account. That means a customer that we owed money, so it was actually a, a sort of credit balance that we owed money to, uh, has been stuck out or equaled, reversed effectively. And then we've also managed to charge our customers, some of them are obviously bad at paying us £10 extra for paying us slowly. There is a law that says you can do that. All in all, that 12960 makes the column totals add up the same and then at the start of April our customers owe us 12960 which of course is more than it was at the start of the month. Purchases then. So these are going to be the opposite way around. Sometimes easier to remember so it's up to you which way around you remember them which way is easiest. So purchase ledger control account or payables or creditors account sometimes people call it. Total is the amount we currently owe to your suppliers, if it's all balanced, including VAT. Non-credit purchase expenses not recorded here, they have other places to be recorded. And again, post the totals from the day book. And it should add up to the total of all our suppliers' individual accounts. So I haven't put numbers on this one, but sometimes it's easier to remember it's a liability to start off with because we owe money to our suppliers. Uh, debit purchases credit the control account so way of remembering it uh, cash paid to creditors credit the bank out the bank out of cash in this case and, and checks paid credit the bank creditors or payables discounts received received is an income because we receive it and that's a double entry for it uh, that's a purchase return purchase returns are credits and then the set off is the double entry for what we saw previously in the sales ledger control account there's no well we'd have to put it in a journal because there's no other place to record it and then balance carried down just to make the columns add up so the bits that aren't in the double entry system so these are the sales ledger accounts and the purchase ledger control account so our customer accounts are sales ledger accounts so here we have a individual customer, but the layout and the size of everything goes on is exactly the same as the control account. So we've got an opening balance, but of course it's not the totals of invoices, it's not the, uh, it's not the 5,000, it's the 10 pound that this one particular customer owed us. And then we've invoiced them for six pound, not the 15,000 that was all our customers. Uh, credit note, they sent something back. Uh, they paid us £10, debit the bank, credit the customers and credit the control account as well but w with all the other amounts, so out of the 6500 that we received from our customers, £10 was from this particular customer. Uh, we gave them a discount for paying us quickly, so they now owe us £3. So suppliers account the opposite way around to the customers account but the same way around as the purchase ledger control account so the same sides the same patterns and they, the totals of all the suppliers accounts will add up to the purchase ledger control account so we started owing this particular supplier 20 pound then another 10 we paid them 12 we've sent two pounds worth of goods back we've got a discount for paying them quickly and now we owe them 16 pound and that's our suppliers account. Same way around as the control accounts, but individual items, not part of the double entry system, additional entries. So once we've done this, we've done our double entries, we've transferred everything into the control accounts and our sales and purchase ledgers. We need to check everything's correct. There are lots of ways, lots of work in the bookkeeping control unit and advanced bookkeeping of checking things. One of which is the bank reconciliation. Uh, I go back to the days when we waited for them to drop through the post on the 6th or the 7th of every month and then rushed around and checked everything for the last month as quick as possible. But nowadays, of course, you can print them off and do them weekly. Uh, print them off yourself online. So checking your cash book against the bank statements. Uh, first thing it will do is spot items we've missed out so we can then update our cash book. Got a separate video on this at level 2 and level 3 and it will check the accuracy of figures entered whether the bank have made a mistake or I've made a mistake because it does happen, banks do make mistakes banks make more mistakes than I do uh, we can then check things and, and get them corrected uh, and then quite importantly it notes the items outstanding so either money, 
that we think we've got but it ha isn't showing up on our bank statement or we paid it a check that goes out in the post and somebody's a bit sluggish paying it or it could be a direct debit uh, sometimes direct debits take six or seven weeks from the invoice being received and sometimes they don't sometimes it's a day or two and also you get things like a pay at pump where it shows on your bank statement as a pound but you've actually bought 40 pounds worth of fuel and then our second big check is the control accounts i've already mentioned that the control accounts should add up to the ledgers uh, and it helps you spot if you've missed out invoices on a customer's account or a, a supplier's account of course if you miss an invoice on a customer's account they might not know they might not tell you if you miss it out on a supplier's account they'll soon tell you and also payments and thing credit notes and all sorts of things that's missing uh, and then the draft trial balance will be produced well we've just added up the columns previously on that little exercise and made sure they add up that's a, a mini draft trial balance uh, but a slightly more complicated one coming up so the trial balance is us adding the brought down sides of all our accounts and they should add up to the same well this one doesn't it's a thousand pound out so somewhere along the line there's an error something missed out something typed in wrongly uh something the wrong side or a combination of errors uh in a way it's doing its job it's showing you it isn't right you have you've made an error somewhere along the line in your double entry system or in your trial balance and solving this problem is a major part of the bookkeeping control syllabus and learning how to correct it for bookkeeping transactions when it doesn't quite add up right it is a very important part of the syllabus and understanding double entries so we'll leave it at that there are lots of uh, error control and suspense account clearing ex videos available so now we've effectively got to the end of the level 2 syllabus this is the start of the level 3 syllabus uh, we do some adjustments to drafts and it goes up or it goes down in our final so if we had more capital being introduced it would be a credit entry the total would go upwards so that's a little bit of level 2 but mainly on level 3 uh, very early on uh, we start getting into adjustments uh, depreciation virtually lesson one on advanced bookkeeping the systematic reduction in value of assets over their lifespan value closing inventory when we do our stock take and put that into our accounts those are adjustments they never a ledger account uh, stuff we paid in advance accruals and prepayments is one of the hardest topics and the worst on topics at level three but I may for instance have paid my rent I might be six nine months in advance and I want to show that in my accounts that I'm in advance and I haven't really earned the expense and also what happens when customers aren't going to pay us we write off accounts or make an allowance for it uh, big topics at level three and once we've done that we've got a final trial balance item or we can put it into our extended trial balance and from that we'll prepare for sole traders a statement of profit and loss that's about a year's trading profits and expenses uh, looking at how much money we made or lost and then our balance sheet otherwise known as statement of financial position and this adds up assets liabilities and capitals and debits of course will add up to credits limited companies have an extra couple uh, i mean again if you really want to look at them there, there are notes and on level three and level four uh, level three you're expected to know what these are level four statement of cash flows takes at least three three hour lessons to teach and learn uh, because it's uh, fairly complicated however let's have a look at the final results because sometimes it's useful to see where we're going and uh, this is one from a level three and uh, this is our sole trader we've got our items we can't show it all on the same screen without shrinking it we've got our trial balance we've done our year end adjustments you can see this is a standard question at level three lots of adjustments and then we had to decide whether each item belongs in a statement of profit or loss or statement of financial position income and expenses assets liabilities capital and things that adjust it that means that each one doesn't balance by the same amount but the difference is the profit or loss in this case it's a profit because without that figure income is higher than expenditure so this business has made twenty thousand and seven pounds or this sole trader has and there's all the assets 
And in our profit and loss account then, sales revenue minus the cost of goods sold. Sometimes you'll see that just as a single row. Sometimes you'll see the workings out. Uh, we've got a little item to add. There's a, a number of little items that get added to gross profit. So we've got an adjusted gross profit. Then we take off all our routine expenses. That's a subtotal of the expenses to get to our 20,007. And the fact that we've done the extended trial balance and then come to the same number this way, that means we're quite happy with our accounts. It's worth doing it both ways. These are quite important statements to give to our sole traders because that's what they're going to pay tax on. On our balance sheet, financial position, assets, non-current assets, those are the longer lasting things like machinery and vehicles, current assets are like stock, customers, prepayments, money in the bank, stuff that will change a lot during the course of the year, uh, payables, so actually net current assets is current assets minus current liabilities, that plus that equals 65,407, assets equals liabilities plus capital or assets minus liabilities equals capital debits equals credits to prove it finance by we've got the capital in the business money the owners taken out and the profits that were made and then that balances to this figure and that's our balance sheet completed from all our hard bookkeeping work that's the end result that you'll see at level three from all the bookkeeping one last thing to try and help uh, different mnemonics for remembering debits and credits uh, here's one ear and lips isn't used very often but it's actually more accurate than the others uh, ear things normally come into ears expenses assets and receivables lips for liabilities income payables and sources then older ones pearls purchases expenses and assets but then you have to remember that debtors or receivables is an asset. Revenue, liabilities and sources doesn't help you on the income side. It's old, it's been used, it's worked. Uh, students also like dead click. There's a couple of versions of dead click. Uh, debtors, expenses, assets and drawings is fairly consistent. Uh, this side will vary. Creditors, liabilities, income and commission. Well, in commission is income. Um, sales is revenue rather than income to be picky but um, it's a it's a good way that students quite like remembering it as well and that's just trying to remember and learn the double entries which goes on the debit side which goes on the credit side